What's up, guys? It's your boy, Mad Pack 420 here, coming at you with a new one. And today, oh, we got more boomers leaving Spotify here. So we got uh, huh, Joni Mitchell uh, joins Neil Young uh, taking her music off Spotify. And uh, I know what you're thinking. Who the hell is Joni Mitchell? I know. I had to do a little Google search myself. Uh, she's another boomer rock star from another bygone age, just like Neil Young. And just look at these strapping young individuals. Don't they just look spry and ready to take on the world got another boomer joining in the fight we got niles uh lofgren from uh bruce springsteen's east street band and uh uh another another uh old uh worthless rock star that no one really gives a shit about who the fuck gives about anyone from the east street band seriously stevie van zandt can go and do a fucking album no one gives a shit Fucking Niles, Niles can go do an uh, album. No one gives a shit. Max Weinberg was on Conan O'Brien for so long. No one gave a shit. If you're not Bruce Springsteen, no one gives a shit. So, of course, Bruce Springsteen, you, you think he's dumb enough to pull his music off of Spotify? No, because he sold his music to Sony a long time ago. But back to uh, Joni Mitchell here. Joni Mitchell is taking a stand. Shortly after Neil Young had his music removed from Spotify due to misinformation about COVID-19, Mitchell, 78, <laughs> announced on her website that she'd be removing her discography from the music streaming service for the time being as well. I've decided to remove all my music from Spotify, the Help Me singer said in a statement Friday. Irresponsible people are spading lies that are costing people their lives. I stand in solidarity with, with Neil Young and the global scientific and medical community on this issue. A again, that uh, letter with uh, 250 uh medical experts was a bunch of doctors that were either lobbyists retired they were bought and paid for some of them weren't even actually real accredited doctors but yeah that, that's neither here nor there but you know uh, uh it's not like these people have time to do any kind of research or anything like that mitchell also linked to an open letter to spotify in her post which she signed by doctors and medical fucking that that letter was <laughs> legitimate bunch of fake ass shit bunch of bought and paid for bullshit the Joe Rogan Experience, Spotify's top podcast, promotes baseless conspiracy theories and has concerning history of a broadcasting misinformation, particularly regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. You can tell these people didn't actually watch this shit, right? If you actually watch the podcast with Dr. Malone, uh, for the first, like, 30 minutes before they even get to, you know, bashing Big Pharma, they go and wax poetic about how vaccines have been a game changer for humanity, which they're right, it has been a game changer for humanity. But then they get into, you know, Big Pharma being a business and how they've completely medicated us, overly medicated us, the whole Ritalin back in the 90s, the, the, the fact that there are penicillins that don't work against certain... Uh, diseases now because the disease has mutated to be resistant to penicillin all right i had super strep throat a few years ago but for a week that shit would not go away penicillin didn't work you just had to sit it out this is the way it was but no these people didn't actually sit and watch this podcast and these doctors of course are a bunch of lobbyists and a bunch of fakes that were again if you believe dr malone's claims are trying to scrub his name from getting a nobel peace prize for discovering a bunch of shit hey, you can watch a podcast you can go listen to yourself i don't care look I, i'm not here to defend joe rogan because you know look i have my issues with joe rogan but overall he has the most popular podcast in the world right now 11 million daily active listeners compared to neil young's six million monthly listeners and joni mitchell's three million monthly listeners how many does Niles Lofgren la laugh? Let's just look. So Joni Mitchell has 3.7 million monthly listeners. So what, how much does Niles have? <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. 221,000? Bruh. Bro. Between the Baird and me, almost has as many as you. And they are a freaking, like, brutal like math core psychotic like all over the place metal band that is very underground yeah so another irrelevant uh musician here trying to pull there it's really irrelevant don't even have a million freaking active listeners you know so let's see rock and roll and rock and roll hall of famer and bruce springsteen e street band guitarist niles lofgren and the, is the latest musician to pull songs from spotify to protest a streaming service carrying comedian joe rogan's podcast in a statement on saturday lofgren urged others to stand with Hundreds of healthcare providers. 
Oh, these fucking boomers. You know, this reminds me of that scene in the Simpsons movie where uh, Tom Hanks is, you know, peddling and, and, you know, he's like, well, the government's lost uh, all their credibility, so they're going to borrow some of mine. Hello, I'm Tom Hanks. The U.S. government has lost its credibility, so it's borrowing some of mine. Tussle my hair, Mr. Hanks. Sure thing, son. <laughs> The thing is that these people don't have any credibility <laughs> at all. <laughs> Lofgren said the last 27 years of his music have already been taken off Spotify, and he is working with music labels to get the earlier songs removed. Spotify is facing backlash for its decision to continue to air Joe Rogan's popular podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, despite concerns that it's spreading COVID misinformation. Look, I'm just gonna read the same shit over and over again. It doesn't matter who the rock star is. They're gonna bring up the same points because <laughs> that's all they're gonna do. Fact of the matter is, I said this in my last video, that contract is pretty locked tight and Spotify, I don't know how long the contract is. I've heard five years, I've heard three years, I've heard 10 years, I don't know. We do know it's $100 million, probably at least $100 million, maybe more, who knows. Uh, but Spotify pays way too much for Joe Rogan to be exclusive there and they make way too much money off of them and they have way too many subscribers if you think the backlash and the you know the stocks are kind of you know they're, they stay uh stocks uh closed at 172 dollars up one percent and they fall at 2.6 percent so it's, it's been up and down with spotify with these announcements right but at the end of the day if spotify got rid of joe rogan 11 million daily active dude the the stocks would be completely destroyed for Spotify. There'd be an exodus people haven't seen since the fucking Bible. All right. So Spotify knows they have the golden goose and Joe Rogan and the controversy is actually good because I was going on Twitter and people were like, who've never actually listened to the podcast. They're like, well, what's so bad about it? Why? Maybe I want to listen to Joe Rogan now. Why? Why? What? What is he saying? What makes him so dangerous? Oh, he's dangerous. That's how it starts, man. It's the Streisand effect. All you're doing is making people more interested in Joe Rogan and less interested in you because you're taking your fucking music on Spotify. I said it in my last video. These kids today have all the music in the palm of their hand. They have everything and anything right here. All the music, all the information, anything they want right here. All they need is a freaking pair of Bluetooth headphones. Hell, mine still has a freaking jack in it. All they need is some headphones and a freaking subscription. No, it gives us a free subscription for free and just browse whatever and just listen to whatever. They have everything at the palm of their hands, all right? For an aging rock star who has an aging audience that continues to die off by the day because, again, these people are 70 years old. Joni Mitchell's 78, okay? These people are not long for the world, but the music's there forever. Wouldn't you want your music there so newer generations can discover it and listen to it no you're gonna pull it off because of a bunch of bullshit you don't even understand you fucking boomer what this is is the last the last gasp of a dying animal okay Joni mitchell neil young bruce springsteen's guitarist <laughs> and any other boomer or any other weirdo who's threatening to pull their mu music off of spotify they're just holding on to whatever relevance they can before they're you know taken out to pasture uh because no one gives a shit about Neil Young, all right? The last time Neil Young was relevant and was in the 80s. And these people will morph and do and say whatever they need to do to stay relevant. Neil Young is a perfect example because back in the 1980s, he was riding the Reagan train and he was riding the anti-homosexual train because back in the 80s and in the early 90s, there was a lot of propaganda when it came to AIDS in the homosexual community. Neil Young blames homosexuals for AIDS. In an interview with Melody Maker in 1985, Neil Young backed Reagan's gun control policies instead of AIDS. You go to a supermarket and you see a faggot behind the fucking cash register, you don't want them handling your potatoes. Needless to say, Young almost certainly regrets that horrific statement and quickly moved away from right-wing politics. He wrote to the... He wrote the furious anti-George H.W. Bush screen, Rocking in the Free World in 1989, and was one of George W. Bush's most vocal critics in the 2000s. Like I said, the longer these people are around, the more you can find their hypocrisies. Just go back, all right? These people may sing one thing, but they do another. Neil Young is gonna do anything and everything to stay relevant. Joni Mitchell is gonna do anything and anything to stay relevant, especially now, because they are dying old has-beens. 
and to the core, they are disgusting, evil people. Neil Young has no relevance. Neil Young is also a disgusting, evil person. Joni Mitchell is probably the same way. These Hollywood people, Hollywood, the entertainment industry, the music industry is full of people like this that just do and say whatever just to make a fucking buck. They aren't principled. Fuck these people. Take their music off Spotify. Oh, please, please take Bruce Springsteen off Spotify. Please take Neil Young, Joni Mitchell. You know who else should join the fight? The Foo Fighters, Dee Snyder and Twisted Sister, Billie Eilish, Lizzo, just all these loser artists. Just, just get all the gar all the shitty garbage artists need to come together and rise up against Spotify and demand their shitty music be taken off this shitty service. So that way, you know, when you put it on random, I can, you know, skip all the bullshit. That way I can only listen to good music, all right? I want up to skip the Foo Fighters and I want to skip fucking Bruce Springsteen. We know damn sure I'm skipping Billie Eilish. I don't even understand how people like that chick. She makes music like she's coming down off a heroin trip. Good lord, she looks like a fucking madam in a fucking whorehouse in the 1830s. <laughs> Alright, that's all I got for you guys today. If you like what you see, like what you hear, go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Gab, Minds, and Getter. I'll have all that in the description. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces!